Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, yesterday on stream I played Shaman, quite a lot of Shaman in fact, 39 games of Evolved Shaman. Uh, 28 of those 39 were against DKs, with the vast majority of them uh, being Frost DKs up in top 100 legend on EU. And overall I had a 67% win rate over 39 games and a 64% win rate against those Frost DKs. Now, how did I achieve this? Did I get lucky? Eh, maybe, but I also made use of tactics and matchup knowledge that helped me not blunder away a winning game. Uh, and I want to talk you through a few examples in this video of things that I did to help get me an edge in that specific matchup and things you want to be avoiding doing if you want to be beating those Frost DKs yourselves. Okay, this first example is not exactly exclusive to playing against DKs, but we are given here a very good mulligan on the coin. Schooling, muck pools, and prescience are amongst the highest mulligan win rate cards you can have. We can have a look at the stats here. Uh, but we're just missing one card, which is the, the highest one you can get, which is the Goldshire Null. Now, I decide actually in this spot to keep the Glug, and that's not because Glug is actually, strangely enough, um, the next highest mulligan win rate on here. Not sure that's reliable data, but the reason we keep the Glug here is instead of trying to search for a Null and potentially failing, we kind of sure up the fact that we're going to get a Null from the Prescience by keeping a non-Null minion. So basically Prescience has got a higher chance to, to tutor a Null. Uh, and the thing with the Null Evolve thing, it's strong on 2, but it's also really strong on turn 4 as well, and this hand just um, works very nicely for a turn 4 Null Evolve. We go Muck Pools 1, Hero Power Evolve 2, Coin the Prescience on 3, and then we go Schooling Null Evolve on 4. Uh, and the only thing we really want here is just the highest chance of getting the Null, and keeping the Glug just enables us to do that. All right, our second example starts off with a fairly standard Vol'jin setup here. It even works nicely that you get some very good trades with the fish as well. Uh, this part's very standard. It's the future turns that become a little bit more interesting, so let's get to them. Okay, our plan is uh, working accordingly. Very nice trades available as well. We're on a lot of health. This is uh, looking very good for us. Now, at this stage, we just have to recognize what our opponent is trying to do and what we're trying to do going on to our future turns. So we have an active muck pause, and we just have to decide what target to evolve. You might think we want to evolve the 3-6 uh, just to get more attack out there and to keep our hands ready for the Neptulon. But at this stage, you want to be recognizing what your opponent's best play is. Uh, and the hands right now are just weak to removal from Fridge, uh, plus potentially something to do with the Neptulon itself. We don't have a Bloodlust available in our hand, so if a, even just a Fridge on its own came down uh, and nothing else, the 14 damage from the Neptulon doesn't necessarily also win us the game. So we should play around the damage and try and keep one of our hands alive by evolving it into a 5-drop and try and get as much health as we can onto the board. If they don't do a fridge play, we're probably in great shape anyway, even with just the one hand that can attack. Okay, so the fridge did come down, even with a removal spell that was picked up earlier in the game for our Neptron. So going face here isn't uh, as valid as a strategy to uh, to win the game quickly. So what do we do in this position? There are a lot of plays available. What one is the best? There, There's a, a Swing of the Weapon and a Primordial Wave potential. Um, there's a Wind Chill potential. There's a Null potential. Farsight. Lots of things to do here. So how do we come to the conclusion on what play is best? Well... If we look at our own hand, we have a Brukhan in it, and Brukhan is incredibly powerful against Frost DK, because if they don't have a board, it's impossible for them to kill you, pretty much. Well, if you have a Brukhan, they just can't burn you down, even through uh, multiple 
seven mana spells going to your face and freezing your board, it's usually not going to be enough as long as they don't have a board to begin with. So that leads that that conclusion uh, that observation there leads to the conclusion that we do not want to leave our opponent with a board. You might think here, oh, we could just go, go face uh, and evolve maybe, and then wind chill whatever they have left over. That's going to be fine. We're going to have a lot of board. But the problem of doing like this sort of play, or even just wind chilling the 5-6 alone, and not even evolving and just going face, is you're going to keep board tensions really high. And if you keep board tensions really high, that plays exactly into Frostworm's Fury. You do not want to keep board tensions high. You want to be leaving them with no board at all. Because if we wind chill this turn, uh, we make a big board ourselves, and then the next turn it just gets frozen while well, they've got an extra 5-6 that suddenly can attack. So in these scenarios, when you're, you're going into the late game, particularly when you have a Brucan, because you know that you can survive uh, multiple freezes from your opponent, it's usually going to be best to trade off uh, and just make sure your opponent's board is as small as possible so that two, three turns down the line, which can happen, if you face multiple freezes, they're not going to have an extra minion as well that can hit your face or take some trades. So in this spot, I come to the conclusion... Uh, the best play is actually just Farsight and Hero Power, and we use the 5 free to trade off the 5 6. Our health total is very high right now, uh, so we can actually t face tank this damage as well. We don't actually have to trade off our 3 4. Um, and if opponent decides they they like, ha, huh, they took some face damage, we're going to try and smoke them. Well, we have the Brucan to heal up, so it's absolutely fine. Uh, and if the opponent goes for a board plan, well, next turn we have Null plus Primordial Wave, which should really gives us some good parity on board. And then we'd still have that wind chill in reserve for later when they start doing those Frostworm Furies. Uh, and then you can start freezing them when you can't actually take trades anymore. And again, later on, instead of pushing this 8 damage face, we just recognize we're winning the, the long game. We can kind of play control. Just remove their board. Make sure when the freezes start coming down, if they do, it's not going to be enough to, to kill us with the addition of their board. And it turns into a very comfy win. Before we move on to our final example, I just want to give some generic tips uh, for the matchup and things you need to be looking out for. It's mainly going to revolve around Frostworm's Fury. The first few turns of the game are basically you hoping they don't have egg into location. If they do, it's going to be rough to come back, but sometimes it's possible. But later in the game, you can very predictably expect them to play two Frostworm's Fury almost every single game and sometimes upwards of three or even four. Maybe you're not going to win the games where they have four, but you can certainly still win games where they have three, and especially win games when they just play only one or two. And to do this, you just need to make sure you have ways to answer them. Uh, and the main way you do this is by not board locking yourself. If you're playing Wild Poor Cavern in your deck, uh, this is a card that can very much board lock yourself. Uh, and if you're facing a lot of Frosty Ks right now, it's probably best not to run this card, and instead run Double Wind Chill. But outside of that, you just need to recognize when you have enough board to be winning the game. Often you're going to be having one large minion, at least from a, an evolved null. But you might have a big glug potentially coming down, or you might have a tiny toys evolved play coming up. And generally, all these players are just too much board for the Frosty K to answer honestly. They will, their game plan tends to be revolved around freezing you and trying to kill you instead of dealing with your board. So to prevent that, you need to save yourself a little bit of board space and do not board lock yourself. On top of that, you need to save reactive plays. And the main ones are going to be schooling, which you need board space to make it powerful. So you can potentially play th all three fish on the same board, allow you to clean up a little bit more. Uh, Commander Neptron, which requires two board space to, to make best use of. Or you have like a gold shire null, or you have a wind shell. And the thing with the gold shine on, yes, you want to be evolving it a lot of the time. But on those later turns, it's actually a bit better as a just straight up removal tool. As the 5-4 cleanly kills a 5-5 from the Frostworm Fury. 
And well, an unevolved Gnoll that trades is a lot better than just a frozen big minion that never gets to do anything. So look out for spots where you're already very far ahead uh, and you're just going to win the game um, if it progresses normally. You just got to watch out for those freeze effects and just save your reactive tools to be able to deal with them. In this last example, I chose this game because there are a lot of turns with some minor decisions, which I felt all added up to spoiler getting a win. Whereas if you went a slightly different route, maybe that wouldn't have happened. So let's have a look at the first one. The first example comes on turn three. We have a fairly ideal start for going first as Shaman, having Farsight, Prescience and Schooling. Generally all three cards that you really, really want. Now normally you just snap play Farsight on turn three. That's just generically what you do to set up for future turns. But in this situation, we already have almost all the ingredients we need. We have Prescience to draw the Gnolls, we have Schooling to fill our hand size up, and we have the Blazing Transmutation to choose the best of all effect we can get. So in this position, we actually do not need to set up a turn with Farsight, so there's no need to play it. Instead, it's a bit better here to spend mana on the schooling and avoid taking 4 damage by using the wind chill here. In a few turns time, when we have gained control of the board, hopefully through our null, null play, then the freezes are going to start coming down, and that's really a test of whether we have enough health to survive. So saving an extra 4 health here is absolutely better than playing the far side. Turn 4, there is a potential already to go for Null and Evolve. But what are we hoping for, really, uh, that affects the board? There's maybe the 8-8 Death Rattle Rush, potentially good, but we still leave an opponent with quite a lot of board. So while it is an option, uh, instead I decide to go for the Prescience. Um, Given we're not in a great spot board-wise, but it is early into the game. And being early into the game is actually a big deal. Uh, because the sooner it is in the game, it means the more time it is that we have after our board swing to kill them before the freezers come down, if you think about it. It's a weird way to think about it. But if, say, we could get a swing turn down, and then there's two more turns until the freeze, or well, that's two turns that we can actually kill them with our swing turn. So it's kind of a good thing that it's early here. It gives us a bit more time to play the prescience potentially here and then go for a bigger swing. Going for the null here is not absolutely terrible. There is some decent options that will uh, at least deal with the board immediately. But we can see that the uh, location is about to come back online as well on the next turn. So even getting the 8 8 Death Rattle Rush is, is probably not enough to uh, put us ahead onto the board and then we're just kind of falling behind. Uh, generally, and don't have a big enough swing turn afterwards. Instead, if we go for Prescience, we have the potential to uh, draw Glug, and when we have Null, Glug, and Blazing Transportation, that's uh, a recipe for a Thaddeus that could win us the game. Uh, sometimes you have to go for those uh, sort of Hail Mary attempts when the opponent's board is getting a bit too crazy. And I feel like this is uh, the ideal spot for that. So after we do our swing turns with the double null, um, trying to clear up as much as we can, we're just trying to survive with the Brucan in hand to try and get to that, uh, and hopefully not get burnt out by the opponent. We're quite easily going to pull ahead on board with uh, the double prescience draw uh, and the Vol'jin activity. It's just whether or not we can survive. And there's just one interesting, uh, maybe higher level thing than I even did towards the late stages of this game. So there's an interesting uh, little quirk in this late stage of this particular game. When we have so many taunts blocking out the opponent's board, uh, and maybe particularly if we didn't evolve into a 4-6 taunt to allow them to trade off, we actually, in this spot, don't care about this 5-3 attacking. It's not going to be able to get towards our face. And it hitting any of these taunts, it's like, whatever. Instead, it's better to here to uh, to wind chill the two two, uh, namely, uh, so they don't get the card draw. And if we ignore the four six here and pretend it was just something else, uh, and pretend the position 
just have a bunch of two attack taunts. We could say if we wind shield the 2 2, they can't trigger up the condition of an undead dying for free. So, and that's relevant for Vizier. If nothing's died, the Vizier spell actually costs two more mana. Uh, and it's relevant for things like Brand Vizier or Double Vizier. Something to think about, I suppose. So we had, we've, we've naturally freeze the fire free. Oh, it's the biggest minion, we should freeze it. But in this spot, it was probably just better to, to freeze the one that draws them a card and the one that activates the uh, undead synergy straight away. Because they do actually top deck the Vizier to potentially have an out to heal us. They end up missing, woohoo. Uh, just something to think about. Maybe when you've completely blocked out your opponent's board, you shouldn't be uh, killing off their undeads. Just uh, to stop their potential crazy outs. Largely not going to be impactful on most games, but just this particular situation happened. Uh, I thought it was just an interesting thing to talk about. Anyway, that's it for the video. I hope you learned something here. Um, it was a fun one to make, and hopefully you can take some of these tips to ladder and do a little bit better against Frosty Ks if you're playing your Evolved Shamans. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.